Welcome to episode three of the Sussex Local Podcast, recorded in July 2020. We're just on the way out of lockdown and coming to terms with a whole new world. But hopefully things are improving. And guess what? The sun is actually shining this summer, so it's not all bad. In this episode, Mark Phillips, our Arundel historian, takes us back to a time when it was thought a suitable punishment for a social offender was to subject them to what was called rough music outside their dwelling. Nick Koish tells us how to strengthen our immune system, a timely reminder to keep healthy before the winter. And then we have a fabulous competition to win a meal for two with a glass of bubbly at Brighton's glorious Ivy in the Lanes restaurant. If you haven't tried it yet, give yourself a treat. It's wonderful. This all lovingly wrapped up with some tasty Sussex snippets, news from across the counties. So, let's get started. If you know a young person, aged 11 to 25, who has made an outstanding contribution to natural history in Sussex, the 2020 David Streeter Award for Natural History in Sussex recognises achievements in nature conservation, biological recording and raising awareness of conservation issues. But be quick, nominations close on the 31st of July 2020 and the winner will receive a prize worth £250. To nominate, simply head to sussexwildlifetrust.org.uk forward slash David Streeter Award. The South Downs National Park Photo Competition is now open with a first prize of £250 on offer to the amateur or professional photographer who best captures this year's theme of My Tranquil Haven. Staying with the National Park, their Beelines campaign launched just over a year ago and has now raised £75,000 to help create a new network of wildflower corridors. Visit southdowns.gov.uk to enter. Ada and Worthing's leaders have welcomed plans to roll out seven and a half kilometres of new safe cycle spaces as part of wider efforts to help the area bounce back from COVID-19. Planning permission has been given to build a new state-of-the-art cafe, toilets and play area at Brooklands Park, Lansing, paving the way for the entire green space to be converted into a breathtaking science adventure park with the emphasis on fun and finding out. Businesses across Sussex are being urged to nominate a key worker hero and give them a night out they'll never forget at the Barnum's Bonanza Ball. The event is scheduled for Saturday the 3rd of October 2020 and for every table of 10 bought, a free space will be provided for a key worker and a special tribute will be made to them during the evening. All money raised will go to the Brighton and Sussex University Hospitals Charity. Drop an email to info at Brighton Regency 10, that's the numbers 1 and 0, .co.uk to nominate. Several local voluntary sector organisations delivering vital services to support residents during the COVID-19 pandemic have been awarded funding, totalling almost £22,000 from the Ada Community Grant. Mark Phillips writes a column every month for Sussex Local Magazine, and he was good enough to share this pre-recorded item with us about the old English tradition of rough music, which was basically getting a crowd of people to kick up an awful cacophony outside the house of someone who was not particularly pleasant towards his family. Sadly, Mark is unable to recall who recorded the piece for him, but if you recognise the lady's voice, please do ask her to get in touch so that we can give her the appropriate credit. Rough music? No, not a comment on the latest top ten, but an English folk custom used in small communities to express their indignation towards a local man who beat his wife, mistreated his children, or committed other such acts that offended the general morality of the town or village. Thanks to Ross Hoy at Wepham, we have a description via her father, Lawrence Grayburn, of rough music taking place in Burfham, near Arundel, towards the end of the 1800s. Lawrence was only about six years old when he witnessed the event, but it remained sharp enough in his memory to pass it on to his daughter many years later. At a recent meeting, Ros told me that this took place outside the last cottage on the left as one heads towards the splash. 
The alleged perpetrator, and these were not always men, had been warned to change their ways. But as this friendly approach had been unsuccessful, a number of locals met up at night at a pre-arranged place on the outskirts of the village, bringing with them whistles, tin cans, horns, drums, or anything that would create a dreadful din. The nominated leader then quietly, in some areas they would strike up the band straight away, lead this devil's orchestra through the village to the house of the culprit. Once they had arrived, the leader read out some traditional lines amended to refer to the misdemeanor in question. A couple of lines that were read out in Burfham included, He beat her black, he beat her blue, he made her rattle through and through. The signal was then given for the orchestra to unleash this unearthly and deafening symphony, banging pots together, shouting and screaming, singing, tooting their horns, blowing their whistles, etc., in a ritualised expression of hostility. Now, though a second visit was rarely necessary, if the person's behaviour didn't improve, a follow-up would take place, but this time, along with the orchestra, an effigy of the offender would be paraded along with them and burnt outside their house. At the same time, the crowd would scream threats for the accused to mend their ways while dancing around the burning effigy. Rough music is the generic term, and throughout England, the tradition would vary, as would the local name for it. Other local names were rantan, tin canning, banging out, low-belling, and even skimmington, as described by Thomas Hardy in The Mayor of Casterbridge, is a version of rough music. One of the last recorded occurrences of rough music justice in West Sussex took place in Ford Road, Arundel, around 1900. One of the serenaders is noted as saying that what they were doing was within the law as long as the group kept moving, but if they just stood outside of the house, they would be deemed as causing a riot and would be arrested. No one knows exactly when the practice of rough music started, but it is known to have been common all over the country, with different towns and villages having their own traditional variations. It was rare for local authorities to intervene in a rough music demonstration until towards the end of the 1800s. In fact, in many cases, they apparently turned a blind eye or openly gave their blessing. The clamping down on such behaviour by the police, even in some of the more secluded communities, meant that by the early 1900s, this tradition had all but died out. Thank you, Mark, for that very interesting article. Both East and West Sussex libraries have introduced a select and collect service which lets you choose books either online or by calling the library service and then picking them up quickly and easily from one of the reopened libraries. Just head to their websites for more details. Many people have taken up walking during lockdown to help ease stress, escape the house and to exercise. Sussex Ramblers are taking pre-bookings for their walks which are due to start up this summer. For details, head to sussexramblers.org.uk. Sussex Local will also be starting to feature the regular walks programmes in the magazine from September. Detailed plans to create 240 new homes, a third of which will be affordable, were given the green light during a virtual meeting of Worthing Borough Council's planning committee. Developers welcomed the outcome, adding construction work could start later this year once the first phase of 700 homes is complete. A service which supports GP patients with ill health caused by non-medical issues will continue for a further four years. The social prescribing service supported around 1,100 people referred to it by their doctor and has been so successful that all of the partners involved in the scheme have committed further funding so that the project can continue until the end of March 2024. 95 residents at Maycroft Manor Care Home in Brighton took on a series of superhero-themed challenges, raising over £1,000 for local children's hospice Chestnut Tree House. The superhero residents, aged between 80 and 103 years old, dug out their fancy dress, put on their capes and smashed a week of superhero-themed activities. Latest figures estimate that Worthing Borough Council's overall budgetary loss under lockdown is approximately £1.5 million. While the government lockdown directive insisted everyone was found a place to stay, funding for the scheme was inadequate, covering just three days of accommodation and forcing the council to spend an extra £20,000 a week for three months. The 
COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted just how important it is for us to stay healthy. And with autumn and winter around the corner, I'm sorry to say, now is the perfect time to start building up our immune systems. Storrington-based osteopath Nick Koish offers us his tips on how to prepare our bodies for the cold season. Nick can be found at nicholaskoish-osteopath.co.uk. Hello and welcome to NCTV episode 17 and part 2 on the topic of the immune system. The previous episode was all about recognising a weakened immune system and this one is about what you can do to strengthen it. So without further ado, let's dive straight in with 5 ways to build a stronger immune system. 1. Regular exercise. This can help prevent arthritis, diabetes, heart conditions as well as improve your uh, different components of the immune system. You can simply go for a walk, find some fun exercises online, or sign up to a course or class and commit to a routine. Two, soak up the sun and enjoy some moderate exposure to sunlight, maybe a few times a week. Um, vitamin D is key to strengthening your immune system. And if you're not able to get outside, consider a vitamin D supplement as a substitute. Three, be mindful. To keep stress minimal, try meditating to give your brain some downtime. Nothing good ever comes from worry. Your body will be in a more relaxed state and feel rejuvenated with some peace and quiet. You can use an app to follow a meditation routine or a yoga program to aid your relaxation. I should say at this point that regular physical therapy such as osteopathy or massage is also proven to reduce stress by releasing endorphins, your happy hormone. It can be easy to get into a, a vicious cycle of stress and depression, feeling poorly and having low energy levels, which results in lack of sleep, reduced or no exercise, and often bad dietary choices. This in turn feeds back into a cycle of stress, depression, anxiety, feeling terrible, developing lots of colds, etc. etc. Mental health is a key component to your general health. And immune system so finding what helps you like talking to a friend or a counsellor may in turn help to promote a healthy immune system. 4. Keep your gut healthy. Foods with good bacteria like live yogurts have probiotics in them um, which is obviously beneficial for the gut health. Uh, so they work by keeping your digestive system functioning normally and helps it to stay in a balanced state. Essentially, following a well-balanced diet, everything in moderation, will be good for you. And having plenty of fresh, natural produce, fruits and vegetables, while minimising processed junk food, will help to promote a, further, um, a healthy gut further. Five, get enough sleep. So, it's your body's chance to rest and recover, so aim for a, a good eight hours each night. Removing distractions, going to bed when you're tired and eliminating sugary foods late in the day may help avoid binge watching TV or too much screen time before bed. A simple routine of no devices before bed with a hot bath or shower and possibly a quiet meditation may set your mind at ease for a sound night's sleep. So see you next time for some more bite-sized bits to help you have flourish. Bye-bye. After months of closure during lockdown, Arundel Castle has started to welcome back visitors to enjoy the stunning gardens. Visitors should pre-book tickets at arundelcastle.org. Meanwhile, a historic industrial site in Brighton's Bevendine district has been given a new lease of life after developer Charterland transformed it into Brighton Works, the largest warehouse and industrial development to be brought to the city for 25 years. Ambitious plans to roll out free citizen Wi-Fi across Ada and Worthing could see ultra-fast internet coming to town centres next year. The investment in gigabit ultra-fast infrastructure by Ada and Worthing Councils is the next stage of a pioneering project to make the area one of the most digitally connected places in the southeast. 
A local retailer and community food provider, the Sussex Produce Company in Stenning, would like to say a big thank you to customers for donating more than £3,000 to help support local food banks. A multi-million pound project to radically improve health services for tens of thousands of Worthing residents has taken a big step forward. After months of detailed work behind the scenes, Worthing Borough Council has formally submitted a planning application to create a health hub on the Civic Centre car park in Stoke Abbott Road. Have you spotted any bats in your gardens at dusk? There are 17 species of bat in Sussex. The smallest, the common pipistrelle, is the one you're most likely to see around your gardens as the heat of the evening draws them out. Here at Sussex Local, we're delighted to announce the return of our popular What's On Guide on our website and in the magazines. Listings are free of charge and you can enter them yourself easily. We publish to social media and take a selection to print in the magazine every month. We now have a section for virtual events too. Visit our website and look for the What's On section. After four months of lockdown, you're probably all desperate to enjoy a meal you haven't had to cook yourself. Luckily for you, Sussex Local have partnered with the Ivy in the Lanes, an amazing place to eat and one of my personal favourites, to offer the ultimate dining experience in a beautiful yet safe environment. Diners can look forward to a host of exciting creative cocktails and delicious dishes once more, all set against a background of tranquil surroundings, vibrant fabrics and greenery in the heart of Brighton. While service will still remain a priority, the restaurant will be implementing the highest standards of health and safety, ensuring both guests and employees will be dining and working in confidence and in a safe environment. So to win a two course meal for two with a glass of champagne each thrown in, all you have to do is answer the following question. Where is the ivy in the lanes? Is it A in Worthing, B in Horsham, C in Brighton? If you think you know and you want to be in with a chance to win, then send your answer into the Ivy in the Lanes competition, P.O. Box 2237, Pulborough, RH20, 9AH. Or if it's easier, you can enter online at sussexlocal.net forward slash features forward slash competitions. The winner will be drawn after the 31st of August 2020. The prize is subject to availability and valid for six months from Monday to Friday. If you enjoyed this episode of the Sussex Local Podcast and would like your community or charity event featured in our next episode, we'd love to hear from you. Please email us at info at sussexlocal.net or get in touch via our website. Charity and community notices are always published free of charge in our magazine and on our website, sussexlocal.net, where you can find lots of other Sussex news and sign up to our newsletter. We should just say that the companies mentioned in this episode have given their information free of charge and Sussex Local has not charged a fee for mentioning them. Thank you for joining us. Until next time. This podcast was presented by me, Kat Sims. The script was written by Georgia Brown. Theme music was composed and performed by Jimmy Sims. Audio production and mixing also by Jimmy Sims. And the podcast was produced by Jeff Nutbean from Sussex Local. Sussex Local.